Chapter 14, Inside Nick. On the outside, Nick was still Nick, but on the inside, it was different. Oh, sure, he had a lot of great ideas, but now they scared him a little. For instance, Nick learned in social studies class that people who buy stuff are called consumers. If consumers stop buying stores and shops and restaurants, go out of business, and then boom, a new idea hit him. All the kids love lunchtime, but the awful part about lunch was the eating part. School food. And the food was never a surprise. You had to smell all morning and then go eat it. The food was always bad. Well, thought Nick, the school cafeteria is sort of a restaurant, isn't it? And the students are the consumers, right? We don't really have to buy our lunches there, do we? Nick could see it all. He would get all the kids to bring their lunch for home every day until the ladies who made lunches cooked better food. He was sure those women didn't cook food like their own families. The kids were consumers with a dollar thirty-five in their pockets until the food was better. That was their money. That's where their money would stay. Great idea. Nick was sure it would work and he got excited about it. But then he remembered what had happened with Brindle. It stopped him cold. He was sure if the kids stopped buying lunch sooner or later, later someone would figure out it was all Nick Island's idea. He would get in trouble and people would write about it in the newspaper. The principal would call his parents and anything could happen. So, for the first time in his life, Nick kept a good idea to himself. He never even told John or Chris, and that changed Nick. His mom was the first to notice. Are things okay at school, honey? She asked one day in early March. He seemed kind of down and a little sad, and it worried her. Sure, said Nick. Everything's fine. Everything's okay with your friends. They haven't been hanging around here very much. Mom, honest, everything's fine. It's winter. Everybody's really busy with hockey and basketball, that's all. And Nick went to his room and shut the door. Mrs. Granger noticed a change, too. The clever little rascal who looked her in the eye and said, But I really didn't have a friend with me. That boy wasn't in her class anymore. Now quieter, even more careful, Nicholas Allen came into her class every day. He did all his work perfectly and didn't speak unless she called on him and didn't laugh and joke with his friends like he used to. School would be over in a few months and it seemed like there was nothing she could do to help him. Towards the end of the year, Nick remembered the letter that Mrs. Granger had asked him to sign on the back when the friendo business was getting started. The chess game was over, so he was expecting to get that letter from Mrs. Granger any day. But all spring it didn't come and he thought she must have forgotten about it. Nick was afraid to bring it up again. He was dying of curiosity. On the la So on the last day of school, Nick knocked on Mrs. Granger's door. She was straightening up the textbooks on her bookcases below the windows. Without a turning around, she sang out, come in. Mrs. Granger said, hi. I mean, Nick said, hi, Mrs. Granger. Mrs. Granger stood up and turned to face him. Oh, it's you, Nicholas. I'm so glad you stopped by. I've been meaning to talk to you, and this will save me from having to send you a letter this summer. Nick gulped and said, that's what I came here for, the letter. Mrs. Granger looked puzzled for half a second, and then she said, oh, that letter. Then she paused. You recall, Nicholas, that I said I would send you a letter when all this was over, and it's not over. It's not? Nick tilted his head to one side and asked, when will it be over? Mrs. Granger smiled and said, Oh, believe me, Nicholas, you'll know when it's over. I want to talk to you about something else. She walked across the room and stood two feet from him. Nick had grown during the year, and their eyes were almost on the same level. Nick noticed the eyes were softer, but just as powerful. I've noticed that you've been very quiet for the past few months. You know, Nicholas, you didn't have to do anything wrong this year. I know a lot of things happened, a lot of things were said. You must have had some difficult days here and there, but your idea was a good idea, and I have been very proud of the way you behaved most of the time. Nick was embarrassed, but Mrs. Granger kept talking. And Nicholas, you have better things to do in this life. I'm absolutely sure you do. And you mustn't let a few hard days trick you into clamming up. Then Mrs. Granger reached out and shook Nick's hand and looked him in the face. Her eyes were turning up brighter than Nick's had ever seen them before. And she said, Nicholas Allen, I have enjoyed having you as a student. Now you go out there and have a wonderful summer. And I expect to hear remarkable things about you, young man. Mrs. Granger watched Nick start to leave. But before he got to the door, he turned and said, Thanks, Mrs. Granger. You have a great summer, too. And then he grinned and said, 
Don't forget to buy some new Frindles for next year. Thanks to a little talk with Mrs. Granger along with the healthy dose of summer vacation, Nick had made a full recovery. He was proud that he had made up a new word. He had enjoyed thinking about all the commotion I had stirred up. That one little word had made fifth grade a year to remember. Before he started sixth grade, Nick was Nick again. And all through junior high and high school and college, he proved it. For example, two years later, all the school's cafeterias in town were serving delicious food at least four days a week. All because Nick the consumer. And the state superintendent of schools had made a special trip to Westville to learn why this little town had the most successful lunch school lunch program in the state. And in high school, well, the stories about Nick and other ventures would go on and on and on. But that would delay the end of the story. The one that started when Nick was in fifth grade. Because of the end of the story came later, 10 years later. And what was happening to Nick's word during those 10 years? Nothing fancy, nothing exciting. Words don't work that way. Words never get used, either you get used or they don't. And Frindle was becoming used more and more. It was becoming a real word.